On the eve of Chris's final exam, we see Chris preparing diligently, staying up late in the evening trying to cram every word before the clock strikes two. Well, it looks like I'm ready for this test, finally. Actually, Chris, you're probably going to end up sleeping in your exam tomorrow. Wait, what? Who are you? Hello, I'm your inner evil self. Actually, I'm just Google Scholar, and I'm here to tell you why you're probably going to sleep in tomorrow. Um, but I have an exam tomorrow. Trust me, you'll want to hear this. Great, I'm hallucinating again. Wait, so what's wrong with studying late at night? I thought the more I review, the better I can recall information. Okay, Chris, but for every time you've been studying late, what time have you been waking up at? Pretty late, but I'm still wide awake. Exactly, and this becomes a trend. Whether studying or using it for entertainment, over 90% of Americans have been using electronic devices prior to bedtime within one hour. Not even that, even the presence of artificial light can also contribute to changes in your sleep. But wait, how does artificial light affect my sleep? Hold on, let's describe the cause of this change. Firstly, artificial light from any source of light, whether light bulbs or our electronics, emit a variety of colors known as white light, but the most prominent color that affects our sleep is blue light. For example, a study done by Chang et al. explored the effects of e-readers compared to traditional books and found that blue light was the most prominent color emitted from e-readers. What's wrong with blue light? Blue light absorbed by our eyes tells our brain that it is still bright outside, thus suppressing melatonin a compound that is released by the pineal gland in our brain. Melatonin is the body's internal representation of night duration and can actually change during the seasons. Not only that, but melatonin has important effects on the regulation of physiological processes such as thermal regulation, blood pressure, and perhaps even glucose homeostasis. All in all, the suppressive effects of melatonin results in a change in our circadian cycle, which therefore affects when our body sleeps. Prove it. I still don't believe it. Okay, let's go back to the Chang and All study. In their experiment, they found that melatonin suppression was higher in subjects that used e-readers compared to a regular book. And furthermore, there was a higher phase shift of the amount of melatonin in the e-readers group. Not only that, there are many other studies out there that show a link of the disruption of melatonin levels with the use of blue light at night. Wait, what? I never knew that, but what could I do? Like, I need to study and I have to use my computer. Of course you do. I'm not saying that you should avoid electronics, but what I'm trying to say is you should manage how much artificial light your eyes receive, so your body can know when to get the proper rest it needs. There are some software out there that actually try to reduce the amount of blue light emitted from your electronic devices, such as Flux or Night Shift. But the best course of action is again to be able to manage the light your eyes receive before bedtime. Oh man, I'm so gonna fail. Let me fix that. And so Chris has learned his lesson, and his body will thank him for it. Now it's time for me to find another video.